I grew up in Kentucky, in Fleming County, and I come from a long line of farmers. And uh, my dad was a tobacco farmer and he also raised cattle. He believed very strongly in a, an idle of mine as a devil's workshop. So he kept me, I was driving a tractor and working uh, during the summers and on weekends full time and after schools. And he kept me busy from the age of nine on. Because I love farm people, I love the farm and I still do. But uh, I don't have any desire to, it's hard work. <laughs> I don't see how people do it. I left home on my own, on my own, I wasn't kicked out or anything. When I was 18, got married when I was 18. And uh, the only place I could afford to go because I had to work my way through school. And at that time, my wife and I, so I went to Moorhead State University, which was about 30, 35 miles from Flemingsburg. It's the closest school. When I started going to school, I worked as a part-time uh, cook in a restaurant. I was really a dishwasher, part-time a janitorial staff and I had with a crew of guys that worked at the football stadium at Allen's IGA uh, bagging groceries. I guess the second part of my freshman year they let me teach the labs for chemistry, for freshman chemistry. The professors knew I wanted to go to graduate school and at the time Iowa State paid the best stipend. At the time I, it was ranked really high. I think overall fifth in the nation or something so for these reasons I felt like it would be a good school to go to. It wasn't until I got in college that I realized that if I want to learn more about what things are made of, that the, you know, chemists were the ones that uh, specialized in that kind of work. I can remember always being excited and just thinking how thankful I am to be able to be learning about this. And I had that feeling in, in college. I remember the semester, the year that I got to take all chemistry classes. I loved it. And then when I got in graduate school, that's what I focused on, of course, was chemistry. So it was like, this is too good to be true. And one day I might even get paid for this, you know. It was a passion of mine. I just didn't, didn't know it. In 1974 is when I got out, and job, the job market was really rough. My first job after college was with Exxon Research and Engineering uh, in Linden, New Jersey. I applied to uh, you know Exxon, and uh, not fully expecting even to get a job offer there, but uh, was fortunate enough to to get it, to get a job offer. That first job, I was I would call it more of a troubleshooter, problem solver. It was a fun job because you got exposed to a whole bunch of different everything from the analysis of silicon carbide to animal tissue. The company, when it was when it was started, was using me as a, uh, he was a friend. And we were, he would call and ask for tech support, and I would be glad to supply that. Just to, you know, as a friend, it wasn't there was no money exchange at the time. Um, there wasn't a laboratory. Uh, Inorganic Ventures was a sales company, and uh, they wanted to have their own lab. Another place was manufacturing product for them, so they said, "Hey, Paul, would you like to start up a lab?" And at the time, I figured, why not? You know, just get, give it a go. It sounded like fun. I'd, I'd always, I wanted to, you know, do something. This was an opportunity that I just felt like I couldn't miss. When I started, my uh, my starting role was to set up a laboratory from scratch. The lesson that I'd learned up to that point in life, the biggest one, was to be able to delegate authority. I can't do everything, and to be able to find people that were competent and in trust. When you're starting any business. Uh, you're, you have to be around for uh, a while for people to take you seriously. And so I remember driving home on the parkway thinking, you know, I wonder if this will last another day. I was always, I took it a day at a time, really. We'd outgrown the facility we were in. I was uh, wanting to move, move the company. And so we, we were looking at a place in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. And um, I had that pretty well set. I figured that's what we're going to do. I got a phone call from um, a gentleman in, in Virginia, David Inghauser, and he was from the, the governor's office for economic development. And he said, we heard you, you have some interest. You're looking to move your company. And why don't you come down and take a look at us? And I, I, didn't, I hadn't said anything about this to anybody. So that day at lunch, I mentioned it to uh, uh, my wife at that time, Linda, and then to Mike gentleman I just spoke about and my, my son Christopher 
and uh, who'd been working with the company for a number of years at that point. And uh, Linda said, I would really like to live in Virginia. And, and so did, and Chris and Mike both popped up and said, me too. So I said, well, I guess I, I'll tell you then. I wasn't gonna tell you, but I got a call from Virginia and they'd be interested in inviting us down to take a look. So we did, and we found out that they were looking for small, high-tech businesses. And I'd never been recruited by anybody ever in my life. I figured, you know, I was always trying to sell myself, but not, I wasn't, I wasn't in demand, to say the least. And, and they were interested in bringing in a small, they wanted to bring in a, a company that people graduating from uh, Virginia Tech and other universities in the area could stay in this area, because they loved it. And so we came down, we all fell in love with Virginia, with the people, with the area. Uh, the, the quality of living here has been amazing. After seeing it, there was, there was no turning back. We changed our, all of our plans. It's the people, they make it happen. It certainly is nothing that, I, that I've done. Other people have done this um, and have made it all work together. If there's ever a complaint, uh, on our product. I get really, really, I used to get just totally upset because I would take it personally, like, what did I do wrong? I want to you know, make this right. Everybody's gotten on board with that. I think they can believe in that because we're not emphasizing the bottom line here. We know that we have to make uh, enough money to stay in business, but we're not pushing that. We're not looking to sell the company. And they know that. We care about them. And, and we, were, you know, we were doing things like health insurance before we had to. I mean, that, that was something we wanted to do. Why wouldn't we want to do things like that and, and so on? You know, these are great people. They deserve the best. I can't give them what they deserve, but I can, I can try my best. This is about all of us as a team. That's why I can't really say I've done, I've done much of anything. It's, it has been generally a team effort uh, with a lot of people who are, are engaged uh, in body, mind, and spirit, in doing, in doing the right things, and believe in that. There's a place for us. Every industry involves decisions to be made, and, and now we, we are making them with chemical tests. You take 10 people, they're all gonna be, most of the ones, I'd say smart, they're gonna be gifted, they're gonna have different gifts and different talents, but in chemistry, you have to have a passion for it. The combination of passion as well as a person's willingness to stick with something. Because, you know, I, I don't think about it personally as a great chemist, but I've been a very stubborn one. This whole, this whole experience of, of uh, doing what I've done has been just a tremendous ride. It has been an ex exciting time for me. I don't know where it's going to wind up, but that's one of the parts I love about it. Because you just don't know. Any day could be your last. Well, that can make you worry, or it can make you excited about it and focus on enjoying the day that you've got. No regrets, really. It, it's just, it's been a, I feel like I've just been very fortunate.